So this is super important. And this is the Wellculator assessment, which hopefully won't be the first and only time that you do it. I designed the Wellculator as a framework when I first started doing corporate well-being and workplace well-being work. And it remains something that I continue to use. And I've had many clients that have gone through it four, five or six times with me and find it very useful to helping them slowly build on their solid foundation around physical, mental and emotional well-being. So I'm going to take you through the 10 questions on the Wellculator. Whether you've done it before or not, I encourage you to print out or to follow on and give yourself a score. And let's see where you're at right now today in terms of your well-being. Remember, to answer yes, you don't have to do it 100% of the time. We're not looking for perfection. However, we need 80-20. So 80% of the time, if you're doing that activity, give yourself one point or half a point. I'll guide you through the half points. And if you don't, no sweat. There's no right or wrong here, right? There's no judgment either. There just is a lot of information to be aware of and to stay curious about. So without hesitation, let's get going. I've got a card here. Firstly, on the Wellculator asks, do you strategically refuel to sustain your energy and good health? So for one point or no point, most of the time, do you have a strategy around the way that you feed yourself that helps sustain your energy and good health? That means that you're probably not having snack accidents or skipping meals and you've got quite a clear idea. You might have even, I don't know, met with a dietitian or nutritionist and done some tests and you know that the best way to eat is this way and what supplements to take and so forth. And you do that most of the time. One point for yes, zero for no point, for no. And then number two, do you eat like an artist and support good gut health? So eating like an artist implies that you eat a lot of color. Color, you may have heard this before, does not come from Skittles or M&Ms or wine gums. It comes from vegetables, fruits, salads. And enough would be 8 to 10 tennis ball portions a day. So if you think of your day yesterday and you pull out all the colorful foods, can you make up 8 tennis ball portions of vegetables, salads and fruit? And we know that that's important and I'll go into that in another module specifically dedicated to why we should be eating like an artist. Then number three is not what you eat, it's how you eat. So would you say that you are a mindful eater? So do you take your time? Do you chew well? Do you savor the flavors? That means that 80% of the time you eat when you're not distracted by the telly or by a screen or not working on emails. You probably take 15 or 20 minutes to enjoy a meal. You get the idea. Number four, do you hydrate adequately? So that's half a point if you answer yes. To hydrate adequately, I'd like you to be drinking water or herbal tea, any fluid that's caffeine-free, stimulant-free, alcohol-free, sugar-free. Uh, one glass for every 10 kilograms that you weigh. One glass, a glass being 250 mils, for every 10 kilograms that you weigh. So let's say you weigh 100 kilograms, you would need about 10 glasses of water to hydrate. And once again, in the module around rethinking your drinks, I'll go into detail around why this is important and how you can actually do this. For the other point, I also want you to give consideration to do you rethink your drinks? Now, this is a bit, you know, it can be alcohol if you do choose to drink alcohol. It can be coffee if that's where you perhaps steer towards. The idea is not to have more than one to two cups of coffee a day or one to two units of alcohol a day. So I'll let you use your discretion in terms of whether you give yourself the half a point there or not. And then number five, do you know your health numbers? So there's a lot that we can check around health. I'll go into a lot of detail around exactly what kind of things you can look at in the module around this. But for now, as you sit here today and listen to this video, do you know at the very least your cholesterol, your blood pressure and your blood glucose? And ideally it should be not more than a year old. So do you test and do you know your health numbers? And that's half a point. For the other half, do you not smoke? Are you a non-smoker? Right, number six. Do you get enough sleep on most days to feel rested and well? So are you getting enough sleep to feel rested and well? This is a definite yes or no. 80% of the time, if you're getting enough sleep, great. Give yourself one point. If not, no point. Number seven. Do you have a daily mindfulness practice? Now this can be as short as five or ten minutes or as long as half an hour or an hour. The idea is that you spend time in stillness, solitude or silence with no distraction. 
So definitely no social media, no phones, no company. You, on your own, perhaps in reflection or prayer or meditation, in body scanning, uh, using your breath, maybe spending time in nature, but it, it allows the mind to be reasonably still and to self-reflect. That could also be journaling. Uh, I know a lot of people keep a gratitude journal, for instance. Yes or no? Now, number eight is how you move your body. So do you move and activate during your work day? So are you getting up and stretching and moving every hour? Because if you're sitting for long periods of time, sitting is the new smoking, not good for us. And once again, there'll be a whole module on why this is important and how we can actually activate and move. And then over and above this, number nine on the Wellculator relates to intentional exercise. So in order to stay fit, to boost our metabolism, to keep lean muscle, very important the older we get, is uh, to stay cardiovascularly fit, but also important to stretch. So for half a point, are you doing about half an hour of exercise on most days of the week? And are you also including stretching as part of your weekly exercise regime? That could be Pilates or yoga or other forms of stretching. And then number 10, do you know when you are triggered into the stress response? So do you know how you, go, how you feel either physically, emotionally or mentally when you are pulled into the fight or flight response? And have you got techniques that you use to help reduce that? So for instance, breathing techniques. And once again, there will be a whole module, perhaps more, on this very important point. So if you were to add up your score, what would it be? Knowing that it could change because well-being is not static, it ebbs and flows, but generally we can get an average, say for the past week or a month. I would recommend that you revisit the Wellculator. Maybe once a month might be a bit much, but um, at, least, at least every quarter. So as the seasons change, what a nice way to connect with nature in spring, in summer, in autumn, in winter. Reflect on your score. So you can print out the one that's attached to this module to this particular uh, video and there's an opportunity for you to write a date and keep track of three or four times of scoring. Be sure to watch the next module which will take you through exactly how you can increase your Wellculator score by pledging one tiny habit at a time. We don't want to go from a score of three or four to ten out of ten because then we end up setting ourselves up for failure not for success and we're in this for the success right we're in it for the fun and the celebration because that's exactly what well-being is meant to be i'd love to know what your score is please feel free to leave a comment or reach out to me or to connect with the community and um, let's collectively help one another and hold one another accountable to increasing our well scores